Everything that you could possibly think of, we, it comes to the equipment room at some point in time. Uh, we handle jerseys, cleats, helmets, shoulder pads, apparel, shoes. Every day we take care of everything for the players from, from getting their workout stuff ready, you know, to their practice stuff, getting the, you know, practice gear, everything else. We're very much like a, a roadie. I mean, we have trunks, we have an 18-wheeler that we feel full of stuff between the trainers, the managers, and video. The student's main responsibility is the coaches during practice. Uh, each coach has at least one manager uh, that they have, and it's their responsibility to take care of whatever the coach needs, whatever the players need. Do laundry, make sure practice is ready to go from our end, like jersey, put jerseys out, put, and make sure everybody's got their practice straps and all that kind of stuff. People don't understand what goes on before a game and how it goes on before a game, all behind the scenes stuff. You know, Thursday, when, we, when they go out to practice, we put their travel bag, every player has a travel bag in their locker, so most of them start packing their travel bags when they get there. They leave them in the locker room, my guys pick them up and bring them to us, and we put them, on a, we put them in a roll-up door and we go through them again. We check them twice. We always check them to make sure they got everything in there. We get it packed, we mark it off, guys ready to go, we stick it on the truck. And before that, before like don't practice, or maybe like Wednesday, we start packing the truck. We got, we probably got 15 to 20 trunks that we pack. The trainers have probably 10 to 15 trunks, bunch of Gatorade, bunch of Gatorade coolers. The video people have five or six, seven cameras, tripods, different thing. TV, the TV people have their stuff too. So we bring just about everything you can imagine for a football game. And we got to get it done on Thursday night, we pack it up. Friday we leave, like this week, last week at Auburn. We left Friday morning and we head over to Auburn and set up everything for the game. Set all the uniforms up, got the locker room all set up, trainers had the area clean, and I mean, set up and everything. We had the equipment room set up. They had the coaches' dress room. We had, everything's gotta be set up the way it should be. When the players get there, the only thing they do is just get dressed. That's all they do. After the game's over with, they pack up and they get on the bus and we pack it up and get, get home. You know, after the Auburn game this week, the kids hustled, they got their bags, they went in the locker room. So when the players packed their bags, we tried to get them out. They get it done, we hustled hard, we got in the middle of the police escort, and we got out of there. We were probably done within probably an hour, 15, 20 minutes after everybody was packed up and ready to go. So. They back the truck up in the loading dock area, we gotta unpack it, we unpack the players' bags. We get all the laundry off, start the laundry done, unpack the player bags, we got the shoes, gotta get out of me, I clean the helmets, you gotta wipe the helmets off and everything else. Anything that's nasty, we bring it and throw it in the laundry room. So you just, it, it, took, it takes another good hour, hour and a half when we get back. I got great students that work for me, you know, and you know, J having Jason and Flash makes my job a whole lot easier because, you know, before, for 27 years, I did it all by myself. I had no no, I had GAs, but I never had full-time assistants that were there all the time, you know. Having some good kids, good students, you know, I tell them every night before I leave, say, guys, I thank you, I appreciate everything you do for me, you do for us. Before I had assistants, I've always gave the older guys a lot of responsibility, to teach them the responsibility, to handle stuff. That they, I could see if they could handle it, and they couldn't, so. And these older guys teach these young ones, you know, they do a good job with them. Uh, we rely on those older guys, those veterans, so to speak, to teach the young ones how it's done and what's important. And uh, they have the main uh, task of teaching those young ones what to do and how to do it. It makes, it, it feels good that you know you got some guys that got responsibility. So when they get out being an equipment manager or being a student, they, know, they can handle some responsibilities on their own when they get a regular job too. Oh, the first thing you got to know about Phil is the day he stops giving you a hard time, that's when you watch out. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, they have a hard time with him because he gives everybody a hard time all the time. He's always picking at somebody. Uh, that means he likes you. They usually earn their nicknames or do something out of the ordinary to kind of, but it's, you know, like a stick. You know, he's tall and skinny, so Phil said you know, it's like a stick. You know, I'm giving out one guy, Flounder. He, he looks like Flounder. He used to be on, um, what was it, Animal House. I gave, him two, I gave him two choices. He either get Flounder or Lumpy, and he took Flounder, so. <laughs> Let's see, we got one kid, his name's Luke. 
but he got the nickname Lance from one of our former GAs because he said he just should, he looked like a Lance and mom and dad should have named him Lance. He got Snowball because he just looks like a big snowball. One of our former guys got the nickname Snowball, uh, Snowman because one of Larry, who is now at Alabama, was here at the time and we were doing pregame at Kentucky and it was just one of his first road games and he didn't really know what to do and Larry hollered at him, told him to stop acting like an effing snowman and standing there and do something. Uh, my first year was 2002 and uh, one of the freshmen or rookie initiation type thing was getting your head shaved and I always obviously like to wear more my hair shorter than most everybody so a couple of guys, uh, Billy Drain was the guy that uh, did the haircuts and they said they had to do something cool because mine, you know, was short, so they drew uh, shaved lightning bolts in the, in the back and sides of my hair. So that's how the flash came about. Feels like a second father to me. Um, he has taught me patience and has carried over not just with me but others. I mean, when you look at all the different ones Phil has. After 30 something years, you get a pretty big. Uh, equipment tree. Uh, Dale Callaway's at Auburn, uh, and uh, Stick, uh, Preston Stick Rogers is at uh, the University of Miami. You got Barlow at Baylor, who's a head guy, who went straight from being a GA to a head guy in a Power Five conference, which is unheard of. A lot of those guys have done a great job. Mike Pawsons was, you know, he's the first one in the NFL that's a head guy. I've had, I got guys, you know, they got two guys that are head guys. They got, they got four other guys that are assistants. Jason and Flash were both of my students too, and they went to graduate school too, both of them. So they, they you know, full-time assistants now. So, you know, I got some guys that got great families and they do, they do a great job in, in their life and everything else. You know, I told their parents, if you send me a boy, I'm gonna send you home a man. And I'm gonna teach them a lot of things about values of life and everything else. And, you know, how to be clean cut, neat, you know, be polite, nice and everything else to people. And, because, you know, it don't cost you nothing to be nice to anybody. So many of them are so successful in life, and it's because of the values and the things that he taught them. You know, I wouldn't have been here this long if I didn't have great students, you know, and just have great people I was around. The biggest thing he's brought is his love for Mississippi State. Um, people don't realize that Phil was an outsider. He did not go to school here. But his love for the community and for the people is what really makes Phil Silver who he is. I've been with Phil for nine years, and every time I smell a cigar, I think of Phil. Uh, it's funny because on Thursdays, when we pack up, whether it's a road game or home game, Phil always lights a cigar as we're packing. And so, as the players come in from practice, they always know Phil's there because of the smell of the cigar. And you know that it's getting time for game day. Game day's getting close because of that smell. I never smoke cigarettes. I always smoke cigars and just, you know, just, I just like smoking cigars. It's just, I play golf, I smoke cigars. When I play golf, I never take it out of my mouth. I, I swing every swing with it, so, you know, you can ask all my buddies I play golf with, so I just, you know, it's just a, it's just a thing I do. And, you know, you know, it might, it's going to irritate some people, and you know, I try not to irritate them. I try to stand outside as much as I can when we do it. But, uh, but uh, some of the players, they really like it. They all, y'all kidding me? You know, Mr. Phil, give me some of that. You know, let me, let me, let me take it, take a puff. And I say, nah, guys, I am. That ain't gonna happen. So, you know, but I try to give them a treat. You like, you know, if we beat, you know, if we beat the other school, you know, and if we, when we beat them, I always give, I give the older guys, the seniors, a cigar because that's the big thing for them. It's, you know, just beating this, the other team up north makes a big difference to those guys, you know, it really does. So it's a little treat for them. They really appreciate that too. So I think the main thing the fans don't understand is what, you know, you know, we put jerseys on the shoulder pads, you know, everything, everything you see for the, you know, for the players, when they walk out on the field, it's all set up in their lockers. And, you know, we have tours at home games and they see that and some of the fans go, man, we, don't, we never understood how this happens. I said, y'all just, you know, just understand we do this, this is our job, this is what we do, and it's our responsibility. If we don't do it, guys, the game don't go on. That's what people don't understand. If we don't get it done, it's not gonna happen. I'm telling you right now. And we, we take pride in what we do. We always do, and we always will. <laughs>